Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. This is going to be the last video of the production cookeries in our series of production cookeries versus handmade cookeries from Nepal. In that it's going to be a bit of a hodgepodge. I'm actually putting together a lot of different companies that make uh, production cookeries or uh, production cookery type knives. And um, and I'll, I'll give further explanation as we go along with this. Now, uh, in this video also we're going to talk about some of the uh, handmade uh, cookeries that have shown up on in the American market that are not being made in Nepal, but they're being made here in the States. And so we'll, talk, we'll conclude with that. And then that will conclude the production uh, cookeries in our series, um, followed by um, all the remaining um, cookery houses that we'll be talking about, like Torah Blades and, and Kaladesh Blades, and then uh, other makers as well. And then we'll come to the conclusion of our series with some closing thoughts and comments about production cookeries and the handmade cookeries. So I hope that um, you're enjoying this series. And without any further ado, I have a lot of material to get through and hopefully it won't be too long. First company I'm going to talk about is an American uh, company. It's called uh, Ontario Knives. They've been making uh, uh, knives and cutlery for a very, very long time. They're well established and they make a very, very good product. And they're 100% made here in the United States. So all of their knives are not produced um, in China or abroad anywhere. They, they take great pride in manufacturing their product here in the States, um, supporting our economy. So with that being said, this is their version of a cookery. They make a lot of different knives, you know, buoyed style designs, um, along with uh, the, um, like the marine fighting knife, very similar to uh, cold, or not cold steels, um, I'm sorry, K-bars. Uh, fighting knife. Um, at, actually, at one point in time, they were in competition and had put in bids for the military um, uh, bl made blades during World War II and uh, the, the wars that followed afterwards. And um, they didn't get the contract uh, like K Bar did, but um, they do make a very, very good product and have been making a very good product for a long time. So, this is their cookery. Now, it comes in a nylon sheath, very similar to cold steels. You have a nice uh, rivets on the edge here to keep it from cutting through. D-guard, which is kind of funny because when you buy one of these, it'll come with shoestring attached to the D-guard. I always take that off, and of course, you're going to put your own lanyard on it. Uh, whether you're using it as a leg tie or having extra cordage for uh, being out in the wilderness, if you're... If you have to put together a quick shelter or something like that, you have that cordage to do that. So it's always a good thing to, to attach to a survival tool such as this. And this would be a very good economical survival tool. You have the um, strap that, that keeps the blade in the scabbard um, with the open top for taking it out. Um, it has a fairly decent size uh, belt loop to fit in most size belts. Uh, otherwise, it's just a pretty basic uh, but sturdy uh, nylon scabbard. Now, this is the cookery. Very nice design, very traditional, in that it does follow uh, the shape and form of cookeries coming out of Nepal. You have a very nice integrated uh, um, elbow here that comes down to a little bit of a curve. It's not a real straight line. Uh, it has a very nice belly very large sweet spot for chopping. It's made out of 10, 50, uh, 1095 high carbon steel, which is a very good steel for a large knife. Uh, holds a very good edge, and it's got a nice uh, quarter inch thick stock. 90 degree spine, you could take this and throw sparks off a ferro rod with it. Um, another thing I like about it is this handle. This handle is very well thought out. You have a very nice belly swell, integrated finger guard, and a bird beak pommel. Full tang goes all the way through, craton handle, a little bit on the square side. 
but it's still very comfortable. And uh, what I like about the bird beak um, pommel, pommel on this one is that you can definitely get back there and get some good leverage very comfortably and use it and you're not in fear of hurting your finger or causing any really bad hot spots. Um, you have a nice, um, you know, uh, lanyard hole here that you can put your lanyard through if you had any fear of this coming out of your hand through fatigue or tiredness of swinging this cookery uh, all day. <laughs> but you probably could. It has a nice uh, flat grind that comes right down to a nice convict edge. Very nice design, very useful, very functional, and very comfortable. Um, well made, well thought out. And another thing that's, uh, last thing I'd like to say about this blade is that when you see a design that that is very successful, oftentimes you'll see other people imitate it. This is one design that's been imitated quite a bit, like Cold Steel's uh, Gurkha cookery has been copied and um, imitated a lot in other designs. Um, you'll see that happen from time to time with different patterns. And uh, so it's something to pay attention to when you're out there uh, looking at uh, production knives of any style or size, you know, look to see what's being copied by the others and you'll know, yeah, there's something probably really good about that design that I should be thinking about. Another company that I like a lot that I think has really been doing some great innovations and really changing the, the image of their blades, and that is Charade. Charade, uh, past few years, has really done an awful lot in... Um, upgrading and promoting some excellent quality. Now granted a lot of their, their stuff is being made in Taiwan or in China. This is their cookery. Now they have two other ones that look more like they're in their machete range. They put drilled holes in the blade and, and whenever you're drilling holes in a blade I'm not going to be interested in it. Um, that tends to be your weak spots in the blade. It's a cheap way of lightening it. There's a lot of other ways to lighten a blade without having to change the integration and quality of the steel uh, and the strength of the steel. This they did a very, very good job with. Um, the scabbard's okay. You know, it's it, it's a little bit more is more <laughs> than less is more. But you can fix it. So, you know, if you don't like a, a, a shoulder strap, you can take it off either by taking the straps off um, you have to take the, the belt off here with this um, this little hook here. And then you can, this is Velcroed inside the loop. You can take that out and, and remove it all together and just attach it to your belt. And you've got a very good sized belt loop that will fit most belts. You have a, a snap here that keeps it in a ver vertical uh, position where it's not going to flop around on you. It will keep it upright if you're hanging it off your belt. Um, you have a snap at the top, and th what's interesting about this one, you can move it out of the way when you're drawing the blade out, which is really good. It's nice, so that way you don't have to worry about cutting it. The only one you have to worry about cutting is this one. Um, you have some other, uh, you have a, like an integrated leg strap, you can also take that off as well. Um, you've got your rivets on the side which strengthen it so that your cutting edge doesn't come through. Now. Here's the blade. As you can see, it's very reminiscent of Cold Steel's um, or Hank Reinhardt's design in that they, they used a very nice, um, uh, good, gentle curve to the blade. Um, you have a It's a very good, strong cookery design. You have a very large sweet spot on it. Now, they don't use a, a high carbon steel. I would like to see them make a high carbon version of this. It is a stainless steel. However, it is a very functional and very good um, blade. Um, it uh, has a thickness of uh, most machetes, so it falls in the machete category, um, even though it's got a nice flat grind that starts at the spine and comes right down to the edge, um, which I like very much. It, they did a very good job with that. The handle is one that I really, really like that they did. This is... Um, your coke bottle design and it is extremely ergonomic and very very comfortable to the hand. Uh, you have that nice swell on the sides as well as on the belly and a little bit on the, on the spine. It fits in your hand 
really, really well and very, very, very comfortable. So he did a fantastic job with this handle. You got a nice swell to it where you can get back and get a good purchase for extended uh, reach and use without creating any hot spots or damage to the hand. So it's very, very well thought out. A little bit of an integrated, uh, integrated uh, finger choil here that keeps your hand locked in without coming up on the cutting edge. You've got a false, you know, it's a 90 degree edge here, so you could throw um, sparks off a fire rod here or off the spine because it's a nice 90 degree angle on the spine as well. You can choke up on it. Um, you don't have a lot of locking capability, but you have enough area where you could choke up on that and you're away from the cutting edge and you can do your whittling. So very, very well done, very well designed, and for the price point, which is definitely under $100, and I believe it's even under $50, you're getting a very excellent quality uh, production medium to light chopping cookery. And uh, you can look them up um, under Charade or T Tyler Brand and uh, um, see their videos on this being used in the field. And, uh, you know, they do a lot of things with it to show that it is a very functional um, piece of kit. Now, another thing that Charade does, um, which is not really a cookery, this is more of a Janep, which is from Indonesia. But it is um, a really fun design to kind of give you an idea of how they've been thinking outside the box. This is a beautiful Janep. Um, you've got this great belly on it. You have a really large sweet spot. It's thicker than, um, it's about a quarter inch almost, of uh, steel right back here. This was actually designed by, I have to use a magnifying glass because my eyes are getting bad from my age. Um, it's Joshua uh, Wagner, who's the designer of this particular blade for Charade, and they, he did a fantastic, beautiful, beautiful job. I really love this piece. It's not a cookery, but, uh, and I believe this one is um, 1095 high carbon steel, if I'm not mistaken. Full tang goes all the way through um, with Craton handle, and this is um, really, I'm not sure it's Craton. It might be a Craton type or variation, but it's very much like a Craton handle um, in that it has good texturing and good um, kind of a sponginess to it that makes it very comfortable. This can be a two-headed um, knife. And the reason why I call it a Janep is, and I will show you, it uh, comes in a plastic scabbard that's um, very loose and that it will fall out if you don't have that retention strap on it. And there is a little bit now, there's not a lot of noise in this one, a little bit of rattle, but you have a lot of lashing points on the side of it. Um, you cannot carry it on your belt. You have to carry it as a with this shoulder strap. Um, but this is a long enough blade. I don't think you really want it on your belt anyways. Um, but the style of the blade is fantastic. Now, to kind of show you that, to prove to you that it's a Janep, this is an actual traditional Janep um, that I have in my collection. And as you can see, the blade design is identical to it. And here you have this nice belly, comes into that nice recurve, very straight spine. This is a, um, a great martial arts tool, as well as um, a bush knife. So you would definitely take this in the jungle with you, as the Indonesians do. Um, another one, and this is one that's uh, from my design, based off of Janep. And it, this is another Janep style. And then you have that very prominent belly uh, with a recurve, very straight spine, you know, a slight curve to the spine, um, false cutting edge at the top. This one, Neem Tanji and myself, we, we put this one together. Um, you know, the curve of the handle, the handle is uh, very specific in its design intent. Um, however, that's a different discussion for another video. But this is definitely a martial arts weapon as well as a bush knife that's used in Indonesia. And uh, uh, it comes with, uh, often the traditional way, it comes with a wooden scabbard. And a lot of times they don't, they might have like a little, a little piece of metal or something that would allow it to lock into a belt or a, a sash. Otherwise it's just the way that it's designed, it's designed to be put through like a patuka, uh, very similar to what um, 
you would find in Nepal. Now, uh, another company is Fox Knives. It's actually made in Italy. This is a higher grade um, production cookery. Now, there's some really great things about this one, and there's some really, uh, you could say, I don't think the form follows function as quite as well. Matter of fact, if there's a knife that you can overbuild, this is one that I think was overbuilt, and I'll explain why. Now, the scabbard itself is very good. It's a nice padded uh, nylon scabbard. You have some different lashing points. You have a D-ring for your leg tie. Um, it, it will fit on your belt very nicely with this dangler. Plus, you have the retention strap that keeps the, the cookery from banging around. Um, you have the split top of the, at the top with a snap um, that you take off. Um, another nice thing about it is if, you, if you're going to sit down, you can hit this button, these buttons here, as that popped off, and you can take this off and put this to rest while you're driving or sitting in a car or, or sitting on a bench or whatever. And then when you're ready to put it back on your belt, you just snap it in and it's good to go. Okay, that's really great. But if you don't want the dangler and you want a higher carry, then you can put this through a belt and take this off altogether. So it's, there's a lot of thought that went into this scabbard that's very nice uh, and is a true form falls function. However, let's get into the blade. Now, the blade is very traditional cookery style, very nice. Now, they do a, a couple different variations. They do one that's more traditional cookery with a different handle, and then they do another one that's like this that has a um, little bit more right angles to the edges and stuff. Um, very modernized, based off of a cookery. But this one follows the cookery design uh, fairly well. The blade is nice. They have a very interesting um, grind on this, in that you have a very high grind, a flat grind, that comes from this point to the tip, and then you have a saber grind that comes down in this side, uh, which would facilitate different cutting tasks. You have a different geometry on the blade. Um, now, your chopping area, if you're thinking of this part as your chopping area, it's very small. And when you think of a cookery, usually the chopping area is all of this. So you got a little bit, two different uh, grind styles for that sweet spot, which is a little, little different. <laughs> you have a false edge at the top that allows for uh, lightening the tip of the blade and, and narrowing it down, but giving it... Um, giving a good thrust uh, capability. This is, I definitely think that they were thinking of the military using this, um, which they very well could. You have some jipping here at the spine, which allows you to get good purchase on your with your thumb. However, it is a bit pointed on it, or a little bit rough. So you could really develop some good calluses on your thumb if you're using this on an everyday basis. What I don't like is the handle design. Uh, there's certain parts of the handle that I think is kind of, I do see some of the function, like you have this little indentation uh, on the sides here, which could give you a good pinch grip if you're going to use this for skinning um, or slicing, cutting through meat or uh, taking the hide off of a, a elk or moose or something. You could definitely, um, that, could, that has the form falls function in that aspect. But all in all, it's a very square handle, and um, even though it's kind of a craton style handle, it doesn't have that same comfort to it. Um, this would cause... I have a little bit of arthritis in my hands, and I know if I was using this for very long, my arthritis would trigger up. I would have a little bit more hot spots on it. So all in all, I'm not a big fan of this hand, and I think it's overbuilt and uh, where they're trying to be a little, I don't know, I'm trying to think of form follows function with this and I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Now if I sat with somebody in the company and they explained this handle, I might get it a little bit better. But just um, um, holding it in my hand and trying to figure it out, there's a lot of things that I that concerns me about it. So this one, it's a higher higher cost blade, higher production cost, um, I imagine, because it's this one is over $100 in purchase. Um, 
for the size and weight of its blade, this is a light to medium chopper. Um, I think it's overbuilt. Now, another company that copied it to some degree is uh, Amtec USA Extreme. Now, their blades oftentimes are made in, the, in um, China, so they're not really, even though it's Amtec USA, don't uh, get misled by that. Um, most of their blades are made outside of the country. But this one does, you know, again, it follows that same shape and design and length as the Fox Kukri did. They have the flat grind um, up here at the top that starts from here to the point. And then you have your um, saber grind from this point back to here. Now again, your sweet spot for chopping on a Kukri is in this area. You have two different grinds that are competing with one another in that capacity. Does it really strongly affect it? No, I don't think it really does that bad. Um, it has a false edge at the top that does lighten it and give it good thrust um, points. You got about a quarter inch steel. This one has a jimping on the spine, but it's more rounded and it's a little bit friendlier to the thumb. You know, you use it on a regular basis. It's going to um, give you some calluses there, but uh, overall it's not too bad. Um, 90 degree spine here, so you could take a ferro rod you know, and, and throw a spark with it. Um, you have a micarta handle um, that's attached with integrated finger uh, notches. So, now for my hand, it fits my hand good. I have a small hand. Somebody with a medium hand would probably find it fairly comfortable. But anybody with a large mitt would probably find this very uncomfortable. So, um, and it tends to be a little bit on the blocky side. Um, very strong and, and sharp edges at the spine here. You got integrated uh, jipping here and on the back for reverse carry. Uh, or, you know, if you're using it as a reverse cut, you got your uh, lanyard hole for your lanyard strap. Um, very nice. And it comes with that lanyard, which is nice. All in all, it's not bad, and I think it's actually a, an improvement to the Fox's design um, in that it's, I find it more comfortable. You Both of them have, uh, I believe, a stainless steel blade, so you're getting pretty close to the same steel, uh, but and you'll get the same performance. Now, the scabbard is not as well designed. This is You'll recognize this scabbard because I repurposed it for one of my handmade cookeries. But this one just, it's a, it's a pocket scabbard. Um, you probably could push it down a little bit and get it in there kind of a little bit more secure. But it's going to slide out. It doesn't slide out that bad. But um, you do have a retention strap here to kind of lock it in. Um, nothing to secure the edge, so eventually it's going to get cut through. But again, you're getting something that's under $100. So for price point, this would be a better purchase, I think, than this one. Now, another company I like a lot is Kershaw Knives. And this is not really a true cookery design. This is more of a cookery type knife. And I don't think they advertise it as a cookery. So it's, you know, they're not lying to us here. This is what's called the Camp 10. It's, it's a 10 inch blades camp knife. Uh, this particular one is made out of 01 steel. Uh, tool steel. I think they're making it now out of a different steel, but still a high carbon steel. Um, Kershaw does great knives. I really love Kershaw's knives. I have a number of their folders and uh, and a number of these knives of this series, and they're all really excellent blades. Um, you could definitely have no problem carrying this in the field and using it as a camp knife, as a chopper, as a um, building a, a shelter. Um, getting in there, doing whittling, small tasks as well as great big tasks. This is an excellent size and excellent um, steel and excellent design. You got that slight recurve, nice belly, got good sweet spot, kind of cookery-ish. I would really like to see Kershaw um, take on a cookery design with the same handle design. The handle is very nice. You have a nice uh, swell on the side as well as on the belly. 
so it's very ergonomic in the hand, very comfortable, and does not create hot spots. They have this polyurethane plastic that's coated or covered with the craton. So the craton part is, you know, locks in your hand. It's not going to slide out of your hand. There's good texturing on it, which makes it very grippy. Um, you've got uh, holes here to allow you for lanyard, front lanyard or back lanyard, or create a uh, D-guard lanyard. It's full tang. You've got um, Kobe nuts going all the way through. Uh, it's about a quarter inch thick, 90 degree spine. Excellent. And it comes in a decent scabbard, plastic scabbard with your um, your nylon belt loop and strap. Now their strapping system, of course, it's very loose fit, so it's going to fall out if you don't strap it. But once you strap it, and it comes right around and locks in behind the, the hand guard, it's locked in. You just got a lot of rattle in it. But a lot of lashing points, you could uh, it it could be molly compatible in in a lot of ways. So very uh, well thought out design. The only thing is that if you're carrying this on your belt, you are going to get that that movement. Um, it will help to put the leg tie on this to keep it in a lock it in a more vertical uh, position. But as you're walking, you're going to get a little banging. Um, that's the only thing. If you put a strap in there that locks it in there and keeps it in vertical without banging it against you. Um, but for price point, under $100, I believe. I believe you can get this on Amazon for under $100. So very, very good, good choice. Good steel and good design. Now the next one I'm going to talk about is Gerber knife. Now this they do call a cookery. I would not call it a cookery. I would call it a Janep. And you'll see why. It's a very interesting scabbard. Um, you've got a little D-guard here for our D-ring for your um, leg tie and a D-ring if you wanted to attach a dangler. Or you could use the D-rings together and put a shoulder strap on it and carry it that way. It's very light. It's, it's meant to be as a machete. That's what it's designed for. Um, you have a Velcro strap, um, but yet even with that you only get a little bit of slippage where it comes out if it's not on. Okay, and you still get it even when it's on. Now, this is the only one that comes with a zipper. <laughs> so you have to unzip it to get your knife out. Um, kind of an interesting thought. You have a little belt loop. Small, you can put a thin belt in it. Otherwise, you're going to put this in your... Either put a, a strap for shoulder carry, or you're going to... Um, I It may have even come with a shoulder strap. I don't remember. And I took it off. Because I'm not a big fan of shoulder straps. If, if it was big enough and, and heavy enough, I might. But this is a, a machete. So this is designed to be in your hand when you're going through the bush or you're clearing weeds and stuff. So it, it's, uh, it has that function. But as you can see the design. Now they're calling it a cookery because of the recurve. But if you notice, it's a very round belly and a straight spine. So it's more a little slight curve. So it's very much like a Janep. I'll pull out my Janep here, my actual Indonesian Janep, to illustrate my point here. So the two together, you can see the belly um, shape and um, the slight, very straight um, um, spine. So it's really more of an Indonesian uh, machete than it is a actual kukri. Um, now, as a machete, you're going to do snap cuts and stuff, so this is going to be very functional in that way. Um, it's very thin stock steel. I do believe it is... Um, I do think it is... It might be 1095, but I'm kind of leaning towards that it. it's probably a stainless steel. Um, I don't really remember. Full tang. You have, the again, the same, very similar material than you do with the um, Kershaw in that it's like a polyurethane plastic, hard plastic, coated with a, a rubber coating. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say this is craton. It's kind of a rubbery coating to kind of give um, comfort to the hand. Uh, their style here with the integrated finger guard and finger choil, um, it's a little bit squarish. It's, there isn't a lot of uh, contour to it. There's a slight uh, swell on the sides, which help it be more comfortable in the hand. So, for a machete, it's, it's very well designed and very well um, put together. Um, makes a great Jeanette. Not a very good 
successful kukri. Um, this is not the best design overall, though, but it does um, serve its function. Now, uh, the last uh, production um, cookery type blade I'm going to show is this one. <laughs> this is uh, Boker's. It comes from their Magnum uh, series, and this is their cookery uh, folder. It has a G10 handle. Um, it's a liner lock in that your locking mechanism is a piece of the inside liner that's bent and spread and is uh, like a spring steel that will come back to its uh, position once it's locked the blade in. Now it's not the strongest locking mechanism. You've got a really long handle that's going to facilitate chopping if you're going to use this for chopping. Liner lock knives I don't feel real confident with if I'm going to try to chop with them. So this to me is more of a um, would function as a carta. I would carry this along with my bigger blade and use this for my finer tasks for uh, skinning an animal or chopping my vegetables, um, doing some of my whittling tasks or just my everyday carry uh, useful cookery type uh, shape folder. And uh, it does have some fun to it and that you can snap it out and you know use it as a martial arts tool as well. Self-defense um, item. And with that handle, it does give you further reach in the self-defense tool. So in that sense, it's very functional for that degree. You have a little jimping on, this, on the top of the back here to give you some good uh, uh, purchase to it. So when you're doing your whittling, you can get in there and do it. Um, this is made out of 440 stainless steel. Uh, it's a 440C, I believe, uh, stainless steel. Uh, Boker always uh, is very does a very good job with stain with 440 stainless steel. Their blades are very sharp and have good um, grinds on them, uh, very well thought out and designed. Now we move on to the handmade knives. Now one of my favorites is uh, Zombie Tool and Knives. This is their take on a cookery. It comes in a, a kydex scabbard with various different lashing points. Um, mine has come come a little loose. If I shake it, the blade falls out. I haven't corrected it yet, but it's an easy thing to correct. You just heat it up and put it in a vise, and you can get it um, to fit the blade a little better, and uh, you get that locking back in there. The blade itself is fantastic. It's a beautiful design. If anybody has watched any of Zombie tool and knives videos, you know these guys get wild and crazy when they're testing their knives. And they put them, they actually take them to the failure point if they can get them there. So they they do everything from chopping engine blocks to, you know, whatever. You know, whatever they can bang this on, they will to try to make it fail. And it takes an awful, awful lot to get one of these to break. This is, um, definitely going to last me my lifetime and my son's lifetime and his son's lifetime and so forth. It's every bit is made is made very well and will function and last um, many lifetimes. So it's it's made to work. This is a working horse. Um, you've got a very long blade here. It's a good 15 inches. Um, great sweet spot. Nice grind to it. 10 uh, 1095 high carbon steel with great tempering and hardening. Um, this is just phenomenal. It's a really great um, cookery type knife, handmade. And they put um, a nice acid etching on this to reduce any rust and give it a really cool um, appeal. Good, good. Um, it has form follows function, plus, it's very artistic, it's very beautiful. They use an aluminum handle that is pinned to the full tang, uh, then wrapped with leather. You, you've got, um, it has a really nice feel to it. Very good ergonomics to it. And uh, 
The only thing I don't like and I think is a little bit dangerous is this um, bird beak pommel on the back here. You might be tempted to, to choke back and lock your fingers that way and then try chopping. The problem is this has a really good potential of breaking your little finger. So it's not very safe in that regard unless you're using gloves and using caution. But this has, you can choke back to right up to it and you can get great leverage and and uh, and it fa facilitates its chopping power very well. Has a good integrated uh, finger choil for getting in there and doing your your whittling. Very well designed, beautiful, fantastic, and futuristic looking cookery. 100% made in the United States. Handmade in the United States. Now these guys actually forge it. They this is as close to a, an American. Uh, version of a handmade cookery from Nepal. Now another company is um, is called IPAC and they make a variety of different, they're always coming up with new designs of, of cookery type knives, a lot of different knives. Um, they offer their product on eBay and on uh, Amazon and they make a very good product. This particular one is kind of a Sarapati style um, reminiscent of the uh, zombie tools and knife in that you can see the the type of the coolian that they integrated along with the, the handle design. Um, nice swell to it so it's very comfortable they're using a micarta handle that they've textured with like a reptilian uh, texturing to it. You have a little bit of jipping on the back to give you some good uh, good purchase to if you're um, getting in there and you're doing some whittling or um, some slicing and you don't want your you know you want to have a little bit more control it's it's good there um, you got your finger choil which allows you to get in there and do some whittling for such a large blade um, it's made out of D2 tool steel so this is oil quenched um, this is about also as close to a handmade knife that you're going to get here in the states of a cookery design without going full on to a handmade company. Um, I do believe they get a lot of their designs from England um, where they will possibly laser cut them out but then the guys in the US will grind them and put the handle so they're they are handmade um, and they use a variety of different material. This one is the D-Tool. Uh, the scabbard is a high quality leather doesn't have the best uh, tanning, so a lot of times the leather can edge the blade. So what I like to do with their scabbards is I soak them in mink oil. That waterproofs them and it also kind of um, neutralizes some of the acidity in the leather and keeps your knife um, from rusting. Uh, this one is an okay scabbard in that it's um, it would have been nice if they had a split open on top for with for drawing the blade out for such a long blade, um, but you know it's it's a fun design and I like getting some of their knives, especially the cookery styles, because they come up with so many uh, unique uh, designs. Here's another one of theirs. Um, this one is out of Damascus steel with a very beautiful. I think it's an African wood uh, with, um, and then you're getting mosaic pins. Um, very comfortable in the hand. This is a good EDC knife pouch scabbard out of the same type of leather. You can carry it horizontally on your belt or you can dangle it from the belt and you have a, uh, a, a loop for your ferro rod. So it's, this is a great companion to go with a larger cookery. Again made by the same guys. Uh, here's another one. This is a miniature cookery. This would be a nice little carta. Um, very comfortable handle. I, I think it's a uh, it's either my Carter or G10 that they've made it out of. Um, very cookery-like. Uh, you, again, you have a full tang with hollow pins and a mosaic pin. Very nice. It's comfortable. Comes in a pouch uh, scabbard. Um, not a very thick or very long uh, or wide, I should say, uh, belt loop for carrying it. Um, this would be something you'd stick in a backpack probably.
The last one of theirs that I'm going to show, and there's a lot of different designs, and I've, I've collected quite a number of them. I could probably spend a day just talking about IPAC um, cutlery. They're located in Oregon, and some of their stuff they import um, from Great Britain and then assemble them here. Um, probably some of their Damascus comes from um, uh, Pakistan. This is a very nice design. I really like this. This is a nice EDC knife. It's, um, you know, what I think about a 7-inch blade. Um, it's 1095 high carbon steel polished. Nice, beautiful jimping on it. Um, I love the, the polished bolster and the, um, the turquoise inlay. And then you have the horn handle, uh, buffalo horn handle with your mosaic pin and your other pins. Little lanyard hole. Um, nice mosaic or, or nice jimping in the in design So it's a very beautiful and functional cookery comes in a nice scabbard again. This one um, does have uh, You can move this swivel it out of the way so you can get it out of the way of the cutting business and when putting it in the scabbard um, well made well thought out and um, a good size uh, belt loop to put on your belt and, uh, and then the snap to keep it from banging against you, you can carry it quite comfortably. It has a, a ferro rod loop as well. Nice package and very useful um, EDC cookery style knife. Now, the last one I'm going to show you is one from a different company. Um, and you're going to see that a lot of them copy zombie tools and knives in their designs. Um, they're not exact copies. They're just basing it off of... You know, I have this uh, very modernistic uh, full tang, uh, but there is some good form falls function to this in that, you know, you have this very nice blade, good grind on it. Um, it is a, a bit of a hollow grind. I do believe they're using a 1095 high carbon steel. You've got your sweet spot about here. You've got an integrated uh, finger choil so they get in there and do your whittling. Um, I love the handle. The handle design has great ergonomics. You know, your palm swells, which makes it very comfortable. And they're using a very good material, which is a micarta handle. So it gets grippier when it gets wet. You've got lots of lanyard um, options on this handle. So this is really, this is a very functional, modernistic cookery design. 90 degree spine, you could definitely throw sparks off of a ferro rod. The scabbard is, is fairly decent, and again, um, this one does not allow you to swivel it out of the way, so you do have to think about where that strap is before you put it in. And it is a, uh, it's a leather that has like a cloth backing, so it's, um, it sometimes makes me question whether it's actual real leather or it's a leather leatherette, um, but I do believe it is leather. And, it, you know, good size um, belt loop, but again, as you can see, there's nothing to snap it to keep it from banging against you. So when you're carrying it, it's going to bang against you as you're walking. And there's no way to do a lanyard tie around your leg. So, uh, scabbard-wise, not the best out there. Um, good stitching. It's, it's going to last you a while. But, um, and, and I think the price point, this was about $100.00 knife. Uh, you can get them on eBay and you can get them, I believe you can get this also on Amazon. So that concludes uh, this video. Uh, please like and subscribe on my YouTube channel and also any questions or messages you want to leave me, uh, go to my Facebook page at Dragonfly, Blue Dragonfly Cookery, I'm sorry, Blue Dragonfly Trading Post and by all means please visit my website at dragonflycookeryandknives.com. Thank you very much for watching. Namaste, God bless, and happy holidays, and look forward to the next videos. Thank you.